There are two lectionary lessons for today that I looked at as I was preparing this sermon. The first is the 40th chapter of Isaiah, from the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, verses 21 through 31. That's your homework assignment. Go home this afternoon. Super Bowl's not on for another week. So go home and read your Bible. It won't hurt you. Isaiah 40, 21 through 31. That whole 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah begins what Old Testament scholars, and you remember my doctorate is in Old Testament. We call that the book of the consolation of Israel. It's the voice of the prophet announcing God's coming. And when Mark begins his gospel, the very first thing he does is quote Isaiah, a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Emmanuel, God with us, is coming. And here in the first chapter of Mark's gospel, he has come. Jesus has come. Now, Mark is the Reader's Digest Condensed Books version of the Gospel. By the time we get to the 29th verse, Mark has told us all about John the Baptist, described the baptism of Jesus, condensed the 40 days of temptation in the wilderness into two verses. Cast out a demon and traveled to Capernaum in Galilee. That's six weeks worth of sermon material right there. Wait, this journey to Capernaum, they arrive on the Sabbath day. And Jesus taught with such authority that he astonished all who heard him. To top it off, he cast out an unclean spirit that recognized him and called him by name. And of course, Jesus' fame spread throughout all Galilee. And that brings us finally to our text this morning. Jesus and the four fishermen go to the home of Simon and Andrew, the brothers. Probably for the Sabbath meal, since it's the Sabbath day. When they arrive there, they discover that Simon's mother-in-law is sick in bed. And of course, Jesus immediately went into her and took her by the hand and healed her so that she could get out in the kitchen and finish the Sabbath meal. <laughs> Mark didn't say that, but one of my female colleagues in ministry added that note, and I think it's probably true. I've always found a little irony, or humor at least, in this passage. The Roman Catholic Church recognizes Simon Peter as the first pope, right? They have based the authority of the priesthood on apostolic succession going back to Simon Peter. They have insisted on the celibacy of the clergy. There are no married priests. Yet Simon Peter, the archetype, the prototype, is the only one of the apostles that is demonstrably married. One cannot have a mother-in-law without being married. 
I think that would be something like double jeopardy. May not be against the law, but it's probably unconstitutional. The story continues with Jesus healing many and casting out demons into the night until it's dark. Mark reports that the whole city gathered at the door of the house. Jesus was an early riser. The Gospels record this. He liked to find deserted places that in the solitude he could begin his day with prayer. And here comes the point of this passage. The disciples hunted for Jesus. And when they found him, they announced, everyone is searching for you. Oh, to live in a world where everyone is searching for Jesus. Everyone is searching for something. Maybe it is success. Maybe it is money. Maybe it is fame. Maybe it is love. Maybe it is a cure for cancer. Maybe it is justice. Maybe it is mercy. Maybe it is even salvation. But everyone is searching for something. The hungry search for food. The homeless search for shelter. The sick search for a cure. The lonely seek a friend. The guilty seek forgiveness. In the village of Capernaum, near the Sea of Galilee, everyone was searching for Jesus. For 50 years, Langley Presbyterian Church has been a place where those who were searching for Jesus could find Jesus. Maybe the searchers didn't know what they were searching for. But that is what Laley Church had to offer. And Jesus was here for those who were searching for him. And he is here with us today. And by God's grace, Jesus will be here for the next 50 years or until he comes again in glory. Where is Jesus? How is he here? Jesus is here when Kelly opens the word of God to a little child. Jesus is even here when you have pizza under a tent on the parking lot. Jesus was here in Bible school. Jesus is here in the afternoon with New Horizons. Jesus is out on the parking lot on Monday afternoon with meals of hope. Jesus is with Jim Kirk, our missionary to the disaster prone areas of this world. Wherever you go, Jesus is there. Some days you may be the only Jesus that someone else sees. I've told the story a hundred times. Some of you may remember it. The two little boys, twins, Johnny and Tommy. They were misbehaving in church. And mother reached in her purse and she brought out one peppermint got one in my pocket somewhere. And she whispered to them, I've only got one 
repentance. Jesus would share his peppermint. Tommy grabs the peppermint and says, Johnny, you be Jesus. <laughs> You be Jesus. Be the Jesus the world is searching for. Be the Jesus that you can be. Be like Jesus. A little song I used to teach the children when I was doing children's moments. Be like Jesus, this is my song. Be like Jesus all day long. Be like Jesus, this is my song. I would be like Jesus. You be like Jesus. Our task as 21st century Christians, as Laley Presbyterian Church, is to show the world Jesus, to show the world they're searching for. He's here. He's here in the Word of God read and proclaimed. He's here in the body and blood of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. He's here in the church, which is truly the body of Christ in the world. Everybody is searching. Help them find Jesus. And to him be the glory, the power, the dominion, and the praise in the church and in the world, now and forevermore. Amen.